what time is it now? Two minutes later than the last time you asked me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've never been in detention before. You already told me that. Oh, yeah. But you didn't tell me why you're here. Uh, is it important? You're doing time. Let's hear the crime. I, uh, I pulled the fire alarm Tuesday. That was you? That was me. <laughs> a guy like you, I'm pretty sure you thought there really was a fire. Uh, well, no, I knew there wasn't. Hmm, well, well, well. Little Leon Moshe has a bad side to him. Why'd you do it? Mad at a teacher, stressed by the system? Well, uh, it's D, not the above. This ain't a multiple choice test, Moshe. If it wasn't for one of those reasons, then why did you do it? Yeah, if I told you, you'd just laugh at me. Mm, probably, but give it a shot. I, uh, I did this, so I did this so I could be with you. And you're not laughing. Yeah, you're right. Look, I, I've always wanted to talk to you, away from the crowd you hang with, ever since we were kids, but you're never alone. Just have a lot of friends. You got a problem with that? I know you're different when you're away from the others. You would just act so tough and everything, but I know you're not like that. Is that right? Look, I may look like a real dork to you, but one thing I pride myself is that I know people. I can see the fake sincerity of Sue Power, a homecoming queen. I can even see the beautiful person beneath your tough talk and ever present scowl. Oh, and I mean that's a compliment. So let me get this straight. You got two weeks of detention just to be with me? Yeah, uh, I was actually wanted to ask you out on a date. You know, nothing major, just uh, a Coke or something, maybe after detention today? A date? Just you and me? That's what I was hoping for. <sighs> okay, fine, but just one Coke, only because he pulled the fire alarm. And I like things like that. Was, uh, without all your friends? <laughs> yeah, like I'd want them to know. Oh, you got a point there. Oh, uh, what time is it now? Don't push your luck, Mosher. Oh, yeah. I haven't started your show yet. So most everyone thinks that I'm moody because I broke up with Richie. Well, that's partly true. Although I don't blame him for not wanting the burden of having this kid. And he told me to take care of it. And although I believe in the whole choice thing, my choice was to keep her. Oh, and I know it's a girl because I've hardly been sick or anything. And my aunt Susan told me it's the baby boys that make a pregnant woman nauseous. She would know, she had four. My aunt Susan, I told her before I told anybody because we've always had a special friendship. Richie doesn't talk to me much anymore and I'm sure some of my friends are gonna be weird around me when I start swelling, but somehow none of that seems to matter because th there's someone more important than all of them put together and she's inside of me now, waiting to help me, waiting to need me. I saw you writing in your notebook. You can't fool me. I don't. Know. You didn't finish your English assignment, have you? Not really. I know you so well, Jack Heller. Yeah. You always wait until last minute. What are you supposed to do? Poetry. We have to write a poem. Mrs. Benson only gave us like told us five or six times. That's my head was somewhere else. Want to hear mine? Sure. Love by Joni Mendez. I was riding in my car. I was riding all alone. I was riding in my car, going through the radar zone. The police clocked my speed at 80 miles per hour. He asked me why I sped like that, calling me a wildflower. So I told him I hadn't seen my guy for over a week and I was rushing to see him. 
So the two of us could speak, the cop smiled and said, okay. He understood my longing heart and let me continue on my way. So my love and me would no longer be apart. Wow, that's great. I guess I have a way with words. I wish I could write like that. You just have to concentrate on winning the game tonight. I've already taken care of your assignment. I wrote your poem for you so you can stop worrying. Really? It's called Broken Heart. It's almost as good as the one I wrote for myself. I better hold it for you until class. You'll probably lose it. What to escape? A poem by Jack Healer. A vibrating glaze, a slip upon the busy hillside. Blow a chill like a note from an angry saxophone. Upon the unexpected hollow part, world, hunk it down, a brown leaf child full and cause a pond frog to scream. But they slip dark shade, close the lid, close the world, went to escape, close the world for now. I've only been here long enough. Mm, I say we get another five minutes. <laughs> Look who just pulled up. That surprises you. Gail and Lail always come here to make out. Yeah, I know. I just thought they'd go to a motel or something. <sighs> this dress has some type of wire in the bra and it's cutting into my skin. Yeah, well, this tuxedo sucks. I told a guy that the cummerbund was too small. Cummerbund? It's called a cover band. Yeah, whatever. It's too small. Then just take it off. Hey, with what I paid for it, I'm going to wear it until I have to take it off. <laughs> Look, Susie and Tom are doing it. How can you tell? The fact that their car is rocking back and forth gives a pretty good clue. Think we should get this thing rocking too? I didn't mean for real. I meant pretend, like how we've been doing all night. No, nah, people get suspicious. And then we've never even been on a date. I don't know why we had to lie. We can just say we didn't want to come to the prom alone, so we came together. Because then that makes us look like a bunch of losers. We are a bunch of losers. Speak for yourself. <laughs> what are you doing? Carla and Jonathan are just two cars away. They can see us. So? So I asked Carla to go to the prom with me. And she rejected me. I don't want her to just think that we're sitting up here. She turned you down? Who does she think she is? Right, who does she think she is? Man, I feel so stupid. How do you think I feel? Hey, you could have at least gone with another friend. Lots of them paired off. However, if I went with a buddy, I'd be gay. Talk about double standards. <laughs> Anyways, look. Connie and Tim are making out, and it's only their second date. Right. Just two weeks ago, they didn't even know each other. By the way, thanks for the cassage. I'll reimburse you for it tomorrow. No hurry. Minus what I paid for the bunch here. My what? The flower I gave you. Oh, oh, right. Um, maybe we should, you know... You know. No, I don't know. We should what? Well, if anybody's looking at us like we're looking at them, I was thinking that maybe we should, you know, kiss. I don't know. Only a pretend kiss. I mean, you may be right. It would certainly remove any doubt that we are being watched. All right, go ahead. You're the guy, you're the kissier, you're the kisser. I'm supposed to be the kissier. Oh, all right. I get more romantic kisses from my little brother. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Okay. That was better. Yeah. Look, there's Melanie. Maybe we should kiss again before. <sighs> Look.
Well, I think that's enough. We've certainly proved our point. Yes, we have. You start that car and you're a dead man. My name is Denise Gandelman. Around the school, I'm the object of ridicule simply because of my high IQ. It's 176. My dad wanted me to go to a school where they celebrate geniuses like myself, but mother was friendly against that. She wanted me to go to a school where they have a normal education, but I wouldn't be treated like some kind of freak, which is ironic because that's exactly why I'm being treated like here. The whole high school thing is a paradox. Usually a regular high school in a perfect world would celebrate geniuses like myself, but instead some boy can throw a 30 yard touchdown pass. I guess I could complain and bemoan the unfairness of it all, but I'm right. I know something that others don't. That once we leave this school, all that matters really is power, financial power, power that comes from building computer software, which I'm technically now building. Some call me a nerd, but I call myself ahead of time. See you on the other side. I can't believe they serve mystery meat again. I wonder what they what we ate today. I think it was pork. It might have just been bad chicken. Ayo. You know, I heard the weirdest rumor about you, Laura. I've heard it too. Really? So, somebody took you out on a date. With that fat kid, Howard. Oh gosh, he's over there. We told them that you were both in the school play and you were probably just practicing your lines. That had to be it, right? We are both in the school play. <sighs> See, I knew there was a good reason. And we also went out on a date. I tell you, you're the king of misfits. You've given every nerd in this school a reason to live. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Laura Rivers. You captured the crown jewels, baby. You make it sound like a sport. Don't kid yourself. Dating is a sport. And you just won the Super Bowl. I don't appreciate you making Laura sound like some kind of trophy. That's good. Sticking up for every woman. That's what you should be doing. She's not my woman. Went out with her, didn't you? We went to a movie together. That's all. That's all? You're making it seem like she'll go to the movies with just anybody. The two of you have nothing in common. You're a senior. He's a junior. You're popular. He's part of the loser club. You're gorgeous. And he's fat. People are talking. They're calling you Beauty and the Beef. And of course you defend the beauty because I'm your friend. Yeah, we just told them that you feel sorry for him. Because that is why you went out with him, right? I went out with Mike Howard because he's talented and sincere and he has a great sense of humor. You could have your pick of any guy in school. He's really sweet. You don't know him. Look, we don't want to know him. Right. Well, he's very special to me. Special enough to ruin your life because that's what's going to happen. Keep dating him. Ruin my life. He's just using you, Laura, to make himself look good. Laura's very sweet. She's been on the cover of a magazine. She's not sweet, she's sexy, she's nasty, she's dangerous. It's not like that with us. You just use the word us, this is serious. We're just friends. 
No, 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 no. You and I are friends. You and Laura are lovers. Yeah, right. The whole school is talking about it. Yeah, I heard Beauty and the Beef. It's bad enough I have to get my parents approval when I date. I shouldn't have to get my friends. It's because we're your friends that were telling you this. And we care about you. We don't want to see you hurt. Jeff hurt me. Rick hurt me. Mike Howard is the first guy I've gone out with that actually cares about how I feel. You know, dating a guy like that can give you a bad rep. And people, but people judge you based off who you're with. Like when I hang out with you two? You know what I mean. So I go out on a date with someone, and if others don't improve, then I run the risk of losing my social position here at school. You say it like you don't think it matters, but me and you both know, you know it does. This is the most important time of your life. Don't screw it up. We're only trying to help you. They wouldn't be talking if something wasn't up. And something is up, isn't it? Why are you pressuring me about this? Why are you avoiding the obvious? I don't want to push it, okay? She's the first girl who ever paid any attention to me. And I like that. I think you can get more attention from her. Right now, I enjoy just being with her. If I push things, I may ruin it. I may not love her, but I have her, and I don't want to risk losing that. Aw, that's poetic, but that's just not how it works. Look, there's a party over at Kelly's this weekend, and I know for a fact that Martin Dole has been asking about you ever since you met up with Frank. You know, this could be the perfect time for the two of you to talk. It's going to be the party of the year. Everyone will be there, and it's the perfect time to get to, you know. All right, I'll go to the party. You've made the right decision. You really had us worried there. So what time should Mike and I be there? If you don't make a play for Laura soon, she's going to go shopping, and I don't mean for clothes. It's time to start being logical and start being horny. Whoever thought, whoever thought that I would have such a beauty all to myself, that I, Daddy Rogan, would have such a beauty all to myself after looking at her for years, after wanting her for years, she's finally mine. And beautiful, when I'm with her, other turn their heads as we go by. It's a, it's her body, perfect 10. She's older than me, but you never know it. And she's very powerful. Huh. What incredible combination, beauty and power. It's a sign that I'm no longer Danny Logan, the little kid next door. It's a sign that I am, I am now Dan Logan, a man who has something only men could ever wish for. She's changed my life, now and forever. She, she's a 1976 Chevy Camaro, she's all mine. You want to open her locker? Not really. You do it. This feels so, so weird. <laughs> really? It feels like I'm breaking in or something. She was always pretty protective of her locker. Better us than her parents, especially Vice President Adam. She didn't have anything bad in here, did she? I don't think so. Not after they raided her locker last year. <laughs> yeah, she got in major trouble, even though all they found was an empty bottle. <laughs> I'm surprised they found one. You shouldn't say stuff like that, especially now. Well, maybe if I would have talked like that before, she would have been alive now. My mom said I was lucky I wasn't in the car with her, or I'd probably be dead too. 
That sounds like a mom thing to say. Mine's wasn't much better. She asked me if I ever got drunk with Cindy before. What did you tell her? I didn't answer and she didn't bother to push it. You, you gave her that for her birthday, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You were the only one who gave her a present. I can't believe her parents would forget something like that. She told everybody that they were both out of town. Cindy was always covering for them. You should keep it. I mean, it means something to you, and she would want you to have it. Yeah. Um, Sin's journal. She always wrote her private thoughts on here. You remember what she called it? Think in a box. Yeah, she always felt better after writing in it. She uh, ever let you read it? Once, when her and Jack woke up, she was pretty depressed. I asked her what was wrong, and she just handed it to me. Yeah. There's uh, something in here from Wednesday, the same day. Maybe we shouldn't read it. I mean, it has all her private thoughts and stuff. And we wouldn't want anybody else to read it, especially her mom. But I told her that we bring everything over to the house. She'll never know. I got it. Yeah. We should slip it in her casket, you know, at the funeral home. <laughs> that sounds like a Cindy thing to do. Maybe we should go through all her stuff. You know, so we wouldn't find anything that she wouldn't want her mom to see. Right. We can go to my place first and sort through everything. <laughs> These books, they're like new. Well, Sydney wasn't the type to study or anything. The soccer was so important to her. It was like her home base. This makes everything so, so final. I really miss her. Yeah, me too. The rest of the year is going to be pretty late without her around. <laughs> yeah. It just won't be the same. Maybe we should get out of here before all the looky loos come hanging around. Right. I've had enough of them. <sighs> Put the lock back on. I uh, think it should stay empty the rest of the year. I agree. Are you coming? Yeah. Hi, Carla. I hope she didn't find out about last night. Jonathan? You jerk. So, we're still on for tonight? I bet that big mouth Angela told her. That depends if you can work me into your schedule. Seriously, how could you do this to me? You sound upset. What's going on? Maybe Don't if I just play dumb, she'll drop it. Don't play dumb with me. <laughs> Although that's very easy for you. Is this about me going to the mall with Lisa? Or was it Julie in the movies? You know darn well it's what I'm talking about. Let me see how you get out of this one. Look, I was looking for a birthday gift for you, and she was helping me pick something out nice. She's not buying it. Yeah, right. 
I'm not buying it. Why do you have to always be so jealous? Why can't you just let me use you? That's the problem with you. You use everyone that you date. Yeah, well, at least I pay for the dates. You really think money is everything? Don't start with... Why do you always have to lie to me? I'll make him feel guilty. Look, we're dating. It's not like we're actually married. She's lucky to have me at all. Are you saying you want to break up? He really thinks I'm kidding. I think we should. I'm calling her bluff. Any minute now she'll start crying and apologizing and I'll pretend to be hurt that she doubted me. Fine, here's your ring back. It never fit right anyway. I've done this months ago. Wait a minute. Mayday, Mayday, I'm going down, 911, 911. It's for the best. Now we can both see whoever you want. Like Alan Myers. Fine, it's better this way. Don't just stand there, you idiot. Go after her. Carlo, wait. We could talk about this. I can't believe she dumped me. Denise, what are you doing here? Mr. Kelsley kicked me out of class. You got kicked out of class? Miss National Honor Society, Miss Class President, Miss Everything Except Misbehave? Well, today I crossed over to the other side. Way over. What happened? Into a world came a soul named Ida. I'm sorry. Ida who? It's a famous painting of a homely woman. Some say she's a prostitute. I must be dumb. I'm taking the wrong classes here. It was question number five in our midterm final. Explain the meaning of the painting into a world came so named Ida. And he got mad at you because you called Ida a hooker? He got mad because I didn't. I just didn't see her that way. And he had no right marking my answer wrong just because I disagreed with him. What'd y'all disagree on? He saw Ida as a common whore who painted herself up and struck out to the night in search of quick money. Okay, and how'd you see her? I saw her as a symbol of what being a woman has always been about. The fact that we're forced to become something other than we want to be. Ida was ugly and looked down by, by society, but that didn't make her a whore. She was struggling in a world that imposed its values on her, just as Mr. Kelsley imposed his values on us. It was my interpretation. How can I be wrong? He can expose us to paintings, but how dare he insist that we all agree on what he says they mean. Suddenly, something inside of me just kind of snapped. And then I told Mr. Kelsley that he could never understand what Ida represented because he was a misogynistic pig who was still living in the 19th century with his macho head up his butt. And that's when he kicked me out. Girl, you really said that to him? Yeah, I did. You're not even a senior yet. What did you get in trouble for? Well, kind of embarrassed to tell you after what you just told me. Don't be embarrassed. We all have our causes. Okay. If you're asking, I got, I got kicked out of class because I skipped third period history class and went to 7-Eleven for a Slurpee. Miss Eager Annie. What? I did it to protest how we women have been treated throughout history. Bye. Bye. When I was a kid, my teacher told my parents that I had a bad temper. Everything was so much easier then. But now, things have changed. Now I have a psychiatrist. 
who says I suffer from spontaneous emotional episodes, which basically means I have a bad temper. And what did this genius suggest I do to overcome my disorder? Socks. Mm -hmm. He suggests I put a sock on my hand and represent the person I'm upset with. I'm supposed to tell that sock everything that bothers me about our relationship and not hold anything back. So I took his advice and I focused on one person that makes me angrier than all of the rest. I call him Dr. Schaefer, my psychiatrist. Listen, you overeducated, laid down on my couch, blame everything on my mom, 100 bucks an hour, out of shape, frustrated fraud, long word using, can't even get your own act together, dork. I'm sick and tired of going to your office just because I happen to get a little mad at people every once in a while and having you make me feel like I'm some sort of serial killer. But Christian, you have to learn to control your anger before you enter the real world. By putting a sock on my hand and talking to it like it was a person? Is that what people do in the real world? Are you trying to heal me or train me to be a ventriloquist? You jerk. You know what? I think he's right. I do feel a lot better. I screamed when the DJ told me I had not only one ticket to the concert, but backstage passes as well. I mean, I had never won anything in my life. And all of a sudden, I was calling in the 25 and on my way to the biggest concert of the year. The new landlords were my favorite group. And the fact that I was going to get to meet them kept me from getting sleep for the rest of the week. The concert was everything I hoped it would be. And my best friend Cindy owed me big time for giving her that big ticket. She just about passed out when we went backstage and met the band members. Eddie was my favorite. He was the lead singer, and not that really older than me, even though he looked it. Cindy was so caught up with all the excitement, she didn't even realize when me and Eddie went backstage to go have a talk. Eddie, his lyrics were so inspiring, full of love, like a dream or something. So it shocked me when he started to rip my clothes off in the middle of us talking. He kept grabbing on me, touching on me. His beard was scratchy, his breath was nauseating. I couldn't take it. I kept telling him to get off me, he kept saying no. I started to panic because he wasn't listening to me. So when he moved around a bit, I got up and kicked my knee right into his crotch. And then I got up there and I ran. The next week, I seen him on MTV. And he had a bunch of makeup on his face, but I can still see the scars that I left, and I hope they never heal. Don't even tell me you didn't do it because I know that you did. Did what? You hacked the school's computer. There's nothing hack about me. I'm a professional. Yes, a professional criminal. No one will ever find out. I found out. Only because I wanted you to. I can't believe this. How does it feel to get straight A's? Like I'm looking at someone else's report card. That's how it feels. I was going to give you a couple of B's, but then I thought, what the heck? Let's live a little. They're going to find out about this. Never. Yes, they will, because I'm going right down to the office and tell them. I don't think you will. What makes you so sure? Scenario. Your house last night. Linda, come in here. Your mother and I want to talk to you about your report card. Nervously, you walk into the family den, head held low. Sweat beads start to form around your forehead, knowing that the highest mark you earned was a C, and that was in dance. You become confused to see your parents smiling, beaming with pride. We are so happy for you. We knew you could do it. The hugs, the praise, and let me guess, money, a trip? Maybe even a shopping spree at the mall. All of this because of a few strokes on the keyboard from yours truly. No way will you ever give any of that up. You're out of your mind. Very much in, thank you. But why? That's what I can't understand. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to ask you out next weekend. You wanted to ask me out? On a date. You may have low grades, but I'm sure you know what a date is. You broke into the computer room because you wanted to ask me out. I didn't break in. 
I have a key. And you thought by fixing my report card, I then want to go out with you? You now owe me. Owe you? It's a matter of logic, like a computer game. It merely lowers the risk of failure. I don't believe this. It just doesn't work that way. It always has before. You've done this before? Four times. And those girls were all appreciative. They were glad I didn't. Well, I'm different. Come on. You can't tell me that you didn't love seeing all those high grades. And now that you know how talented I am, don't I look a lot better to you? Gerald, let me explain something to you. I don't date guys because of what they do for me. I date guys because I want to be with them. So now you want to be with me, right? No. As a matter of fact, I want to turn you in for the slime ball that you are. I'll deny everything. I'm sure you would. If you tell the office, then your parents will your real grades. They already do. I told them that there was a mistake on my report card, like maybe the computer burped or something. Computers don't burp. Well, they bought it, and they were pretty disappointed with the truth. I think it made my real grades sound even worse. That's your own fault. My fault? You could have good grades for the rest of the year if you wanted. And that's not all. How about free airline tickets? A credit line at the store of your choice? Free phone calls? You name it, and me and my little computer can create it. You are one sick puppy. You know, you're different from the rest. I didn't enter your attitude into the equation. I really thought you figured out. Gerald, you don't even have yourself figured out. So does this mean you won't go out with me? Grant, can I talk to you? You already are. I mean, alone. Whoa. Um, I'll catch up with you later, Noel. All right, you got two minutes. I should have said something in front of him. I should have said something in front of the whole class. What are you talking about? I saw you, Grand Arthur. I saw you cheat on the test this morning. That's bull. I didn't cheat on no test. Yes, you did. I saw you copy off of Kenneth. You weren't even subtle about it. He'd write, you'd copy. He'd write, you'd copy. You even turned in your test right after he did. I don't have to take this from you. If I don't get some answers, I'll go to Mr. Martin and tell him. All he has to do is compare your answers. So you saw me copying off someone's test. What do you care? I didn't copy off from you. Oh, then it should have mattered because you didn't copy off of me? Yeah. What's it to you? Because I studied last night. That's why. What? I know you might not believe this, but I have a life. I wanted to go see a movie last night, but I had to stay home because I had to sit down and study mitosis. Mitosis? Mitosis. It was the seventh question on the test. You wrote down C, which was the correct answer. Wait, how do you not wrote down C? Were you copying off my paper? Don't twist this around. I studied. I remember mitosis. Mr. Martin showed that movie. The nucleus of a cell divides in half, and each of the halves contain the same number of chromosomes. That's right. I know. If you knew that, then why did you copy off the test? Maybe I just did it for grins. Grins? Yeah, as a joke. I don't buy that for a minute. Why did you cheat? The same reason I cheat on every test I take. Don't tell me you're worried about getting kicked off the football team. All you jocks are like, you are way out of line. If that isn't the reason, then what is? If you really have to know, it's because I can't read. What? Look, if you want to turn me in, go ahead. Please leave me alone. Wait, I'm not going to turn you in. It just made me mad that you copied up the test and you got away with it. That's all. Yeah. Well, I've been getting away with it for a long time. So you really can't read? I can read a little. Easy stuff. 
but it takes me a while and Tess uses a lot of big words. Look, I shouldn't have told you this. You tricked me. If you're worried about me telling anyone, forget it. I'm not like that. I just can't imagine that someone who's been going to school as long as you have wouldn't be able to read. It's a lot easier than you think. They have special programs that can help, you know? And what do they call those kids that go to those special programs? I wouldn't want people to make fun of you since you're so popular and all. So are you pissed because I cheated on the test or because I'm popular? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Look, if it makes you feel better, next test Martin gives, I'll flunk it. That won't make me feel better. Then what do you want from me? Let me help you. Help me? I could help you to read. Better, I mean. That's too late. Maybe a few years ago. Grant, you're a very smart guy. I can tell. It wouldn't take long. I know it wouldn't. But what if someone finds out? You've gone all this time and no one did. I'll have to think about this. All right, I won't push it, but you'd also be doing me a big favor. How? Well, I want to be a teacher someday, and this would be great practice. Well, like I said, I'll think about it. Okay. Allison? Yeah? We got a game tonight, but how about tomorrow at around eight? Sure. Great. And um, thanks. What do we have so far? Just the title. We've been working on the stupid story for over two hours, and all we have is a title? And even that sucks. I kind of like it. The perfect guy. It's got a certain mystery about it. Yeah, the mystery is that we're never going to finish this in time. It's due tomorrow. All right, let's quit arguing and start writing. How about this? It was a dark and stormy night when I heard a knock at my door. I was a stranger. He had a hunchback and limped badly. No way, not a hunchback. Make him more romantic. He was a stranger. He was a young, handsome man. With a thick English accent. I hate foreign accents. He was a well-spoken guy from the Midwest. I want an English guy. You should have thought about that when he needs all the writing. All right, so he needs to use the phone. Uh, oh, I know, the power goes out because of the storm. Good. Suddenly, the power goes out. Just because the power goes out doesn't mean the phone is dead. So, how about this? He suddenly goes to reach for his phone, but... I don't know. Trust me, Andrea, it works. So then he decides he has to stay the night with us. He turns and faces the two girls. This is getting interesting. How about the two girls light some candles and get to know him better? Mm, I have a better idea. Realizing he'll be staying the night, he looks at the two girls more closely. He first takes a look at Andrea. A nice girl, but rather plain, he thinks to himself. Hey! He then looks at Nina, drinking her vision, dazzled by her beauty. He then goes to reach for her hand. Nina, this is supposed to be our story. Besides, he's a perfect guy, not your perfect guy. He then takes her hand, sweeps her off her feet, and carries her down the, down the hall to the room where they kiss passionately for the rest of the dark and stormy night. Nina, wait. 
What about our assignment? Nina. All right, I'll just write the story by myself and you can flunk. It was late fall when Andrea's boyfriend from England came to visit. She was a little mad at him for being late, but when he showed her the roses, she smiled and forgave him. This was gonna be a night they will both remember for a long, long time. I've missed you. How long has it been? <laughs> Almost 10 hours. That's too long. Way too long. I thought you weren't gonna wear that today. Not at home, but I'm gonna wear it here at school. Aren't you afraid someone will find out? To tell you the truth, I'm afraid someone won't. I think we just should tell our parents. You know, I do too, but we both agree that your dad would freak. No, my mom will freak. My dad will probably just disown me. They're gonna really hate me when they find out. Then it's their problem. Especially now that I'm the daughter-in-law. What's wrong? It's not fair to ask you to be my wife then pretend that we're still just dating. We've been all through this. It's only for a couple more months. Then we're both 18 and nobody can say nothing. You're right. No, we're right. So do you feel any different? I didn't think I would, but when I woke up today, I can't even describe it. You don't have to. Been there, done that. You don't regret it, do you? No way, it's perfect. We're perfect. I still want a big wedding, you know. I know, you want a beautiful old fashioned wedding. <laughs> no, I want the appliances and money and stuff. <laughs> now I see. Besides, keeping this thing a secret, you know, living each day like a mystery, it's so romantic. I never looked like, at it like that before. Now, it's kind of like a mover or something. One with a very happy ending. It will always be like this. You want it, Adam? Always. <laughs>